Interstate 30. So many people drive east, west, north, and south of it, you might not even realize how it carves Dallas in two. I-30 is also the line that largely separates financial opportunity in the north from financial barriers in the south. Why is that? Well, we have found new evidence of practices that exclude black and Hispanic residents from getting bank loans below I-30. Petrie says he went to Houston to get financing for his business after seven local banks and savings and loans turned him down. He sees his problems as typical, wanting to expand, but getting little or no support from financial institutions. In this community, it's an economic embargo. I mean, we wouldn't have a housing problem. We wouldn't have an unemployment problem. We wouldn't have a police problem. That was 32 years ago. And today, car wholesaler Robert Petrie is still in business at that same location in South Dallas. The things that you talked about in 88, uh, I mean, is anything better? It's all pretty much the same? Yeah, I would say worse. Today, Petrie also owns 132 acres of land, including a large event center called Skyline Ranch. He says all of that comes despite a lack of access to bank loans below I-30. They feel that, hey, the, the, the black community, blacks don't deserve opportunities. So we're gonna deny them now, but they're, they're not just sitting around like saying that right in their well, boardroom. Well, are they? there are ways. Yeah, because they underestimate what we can do as a people. Above I-30, there's a high concentration of white people and upper income neighborhoods. South of 30 is mostly black and Hispanic people with 38 percent of residents living below the poverty line. This area over here is the corner of the Dallas North Tollway and Northwest Highway. And there are just bank, bank, banks all over the place. There's a bank over there. There are 31 bank branches packed into this corner, while in all of Southern Dallas, there are just 58 bank branches in total. Above I-30, across Dallas County, there are 474 bank branches. The city has a long history of excluding blacks from bank loans. It's called redlining. Check out this map from 1937, with red lines drawn around the south side communities that we're talking about. For decades, banks openly denied loans here, particularly to black communities, and the government said it was okay. Then in 1977, Congress attempted to remedy the practice of redlining with the Community Reinvestment Act. The CRA encouraged banks to meet the credit needs of the entire community where they operate. Under the CRA, each bank draws an assessment area map, which basically outlines where it does business. And the law says a map must contain entire counties, cities, or towns, and it cannot arbitrarily exclude low or moderate income geographies. But the CRA recognized some banks might not be able to serve an entire community, and in that case, they could use something like a highway to draw a boundary, as long as that new map does not illegally discriminate. So our team asked every bank in Dallas County, 105 of them, to provide us with their assessment area maps, the area where they do business. And what we found is that 20% of the banks in Dallas County draw maps that exclude all or parts of Southern Dallas. I mean, so the opportunity is there for any bank. If you wanna make a committed effort to be part of this community, to be part of the effort, I mean, I think it's here. James McGee was a compliance manager who used to help banks follow the rules of the CRA. Now he advocates for greater reinvestment below I-30 as president of the nonprofit Southern Dallas Progress. So when they draw those kind of maps, is that, is that discrimination? I, I think it's discrimination because you look at the demographic of people and where they're located and you're excluding them. I mean, I think it is discrimination. Here are some examples of what we found. Dallas Capital Bank has a single branch in Dallas County near the Tollway and 635. From this location, Dallas Capital provides services to all of Denton County and half of Collin County, but covers virtually nothing in Dallas County below I-30. Dallas Capital Bank has declined to comment for this story. Benchmark Bank has three branches at Preston and Royal, Hillcrest and Lover's Lane, and McKinney Avenue, just two miles north of I-30. 
Benchmark drew a map that extends north into portions of Denton and Collin counties and picks up parts of Dallas's affluent Kessler Park and Bishop Arts neighborhoods in Oak Cliff, but little else below I-30. Benchmark says all areas conform to CRA regulatory requirements. There's also Interbank. Its two Dallas County branches are located at 75 and Mockingbird and the tollway at Lover's Lane. From these branches, Interbank drew a map that excludes virtually everything south of I-30. To the south of Dallas County, Interbank also has branches in Ellis County, and one of them is just two miles from the Dallas County line. Interbank serves all of Ellis County, Erath, Somerville, Hood, Parker, and Tarrant counties, but only half of Dallas County. Interbank declined multiple requests for a comment, but in its most recent bank examination, regulators said no evidence of discrimination was identified. Why do you think it looks like that, that map? Oh, they made a conscious effort to create it like that. And that's gonna be a senior management decision that's, you know, particularly, you know, doing that and okaying it. And it's additionally signed off by uh, the regulators. Banks with maps that include all of Dallas County make 48% of their loans to whites 22% to Hispanics, and 7% to Blacks. Those numbers don't total 100% because not all borrowers report race data. But by comparison, we found banks that exclude Dallas below I-30 lend 45% to Whites, 8% to Hispanics, and 2% to Blacks. What about bank regulators, the people who grade banks every few years on how well they serve low-income communities? While regulators give passing grades to banks 98% of the time based on the exams that we saw. And James says that's happening because regulators don't scrutinize how the banks are drawn. They just grade the banks on what happens inside their maps. I mean, it has to be judged hard by the regulator. I mean, if we're in school and every class <laughs> passes, I mean, I think it's something wrong with the test. And I think outside of that, the banks are going to be hard inclined to possibly you know, improve their current strategy. I mean, because it's working and they're passing their exams. Three different government agencies work together to evaluate banks. The Federal Reserve Bank declined to comment for this story, but it's proposing rule changes to modernize regulations because of weaknesses in the Community Reinvestment Act. The Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, or FDIC, says if our examiners identify a pattern or practice of discrimination at an institution, the case is referred to the Department of Justice for appropriate action. And the Office of the Comptroller of the Currency, the OCC, regulates big national banks. The OCC has a new rule requiring that assessment areas be no smaller than a whole county. So what can the regulators do? Well, I mean, what we're going to do, we're going to make them do their jobs. We're going to force them to do their jobs, and we're going to force the banks to make loans in our community. None of what you've just seen surprises Robert Petrie at all. He's been discouraged by banks his entire life. And just this January, he sued one. Petrie claimed because he's black, a loan officer quoted him outrageous terms to make him go away. See, a lot of the things that's happening that's negative in the black community has been by design. And there are forces that have designed these problems that we face, and that's racism. I think the time has come to bring to bear the power of the nonviolent direct action movement on the basic economic conditions that we face all over the country. Economic justice is not about charity. It's about opportunity to borrow money, pay it back, and participate in the larger economy. But on the road to opportunity, unlike any other highway in Dallas County, only I-30 seems to get in the way. I'm David Schechter reporting.